might want to talk to guys that actually catch stuff. <laughs> my name is Aaron, and that's my wife, Kathy. We always fish. We come early, maybe around three or so. Something about the ocean, just listening to the ocean go back and forth. And just um, being being here and just being able to think your thoughts without somebody um, interrupting. There's nothing like it. My father started me off with a little bamboo pole, sit me on a rock, gave me a little pole, and I started fishing. And that's the one thing good about fishing. If you have a really good day, you can share with your family, your friends, neighbors. Not that we ever catch enough to share with people, but eh, we hope we will. Alua fishing has been on from since the Hawaiians. I guess the clubs probably started before World War II because I know those guys are always fishing back then. The Hawaiians are awesome too. They're the ones who taught us all about conserving, taking care of the place. That's why the fishermen over here, they're really awesome. Not just building this place, but man, if you just watch them, how they clean up after themselves, tell the next generation what they should do, being aware of all the people that are around and not just you who fishes here, but you gotta keep it clean and nice for everybody. Bamboo ridges, the reason is in the olden days when guys used to fish for aluas over here, people used bamboo. So this is the ridge. When you come here, this whole place would be like a bamboo forest. Aluas swim in schools. So, you know, you come down here, there'll be 18 guys, two poles each, 36 poles in this place. There's a, people would say there's so much poles at a time that if you fell off the cliff, you couldn't hit the water because the poles would keep you up. In the peak of the Lua season, guys will stay overnight because I've come here in the morning and maybe five o'clock before sunrise, they'll get a big Alua bite. It was built like three times. I think a couple of the hurricanes wiped them out. But um, this last one was done, I think in the 2000s. The Alua Fishing Club comes down and they, they said there was like over, what, 300 guys. They made a big chain from the top of the road and just pass down the cement. You fish and it's very calming, whether you catch or not, but catching is the bonus. Plus it's um, something that makes my father, you know, proud. He says, oh, after all these years, he still fishes and he actually catches something. The next thing to the 100 pounder that the Alua fishermen want to catch is the Kagami Alua. It's very good eating. That's the goal of every Alua fisherman to at least catch one Alua a year to be on the scoreboard. Many of these guys have fished many years, 20, 30 years, and have never caught a Kagami Alua. Alan's caught two on one pole at <laughs> one time. <laughs> Started in the 50s with my father, and this was one of the first places he brought me because he was a regular down in the area. Yeah? Later on in the 50s, I was practicing down a uh, high school field with a bucket of water and after one year, my father let me come down and cast. Now, because I'm 67, I throw in all these uh, lighter poles, yeah? If I was to throw the poles what I was throwing when I was young, I don't think I can cast already. <laughs> it's too heavy. Nighttime, you should catch on bigger ones. It's not like before, yeah? Usually only half a day, half a night and you get enough fish for, for dinner for the week, yeah. Nowadays, you can't even catch dinner for, for one night. <laughs> this is one of the easiest places to fish. You know, you can be 70, 80 years old, you can still climb down this mountain. For me, I'm too old already. You can climb down those mountains so long your body's in shape. You know, up until I would say 
my mid 50s I can climb down most places up until my mid 40s there are certain areas till today I still won't fish because the cliff is too steep and it takes a lot out of you for climb down the cliffs and if you catch fish it takes even more for climb out <laughs> for cast the weight to come around and snap that lead to make it go out it gets harder every year yeah even climbing up and down these mountains get harder every year I learned from an early age to always you know respect the wave and watch if you think it's too rough don't fish the spot that I fish called first bridge then that's right next to submarine point here but I don't like submarine point because it, it's, it's a very heavy place it's spooky it's fishing over there way out in the point and the, the area is so, so small and the wave come over my biggest fear is a wave a big wave one of those uh, freak waves that come over that's the only thing I worry about Freak wave, big freak wave come over and because it has happened here, you know. It can be calm, very, very calm with no wind and it can get to be like a tsunami. I grew up in a plantation camp in Koloa, Kauai. I was born and raised there and I was born in 1939. I started fishing maybe when I was about six years old. We used to go camping, like family and friends outing. No, no outing, but that was part of our life, you know, going camping, fishing. The whole camp used to go, get together and just fish. In the weekdays, I go every morning from 3.30 or 4 o'clock, I'm down there. And the weekends, I go maybe from Saturday night, midnight, and I stay till uh, the following day. I've been fishing for maybe 60 years already, or more, 65 years maybe. My greatest success, I think, is being able to retire and going fishing now every day. <laughs> getting hard on my legs now. I would be happy, very happy if I can fish another 10 years. I love living here, close to the ocean. And of course, I love fishing. It's the perfect world I'm not right now. And not being retired too. And not too many people fish after they 80s, in the 80s, you know, especially walking down that, that trail there and walking back up. My time is limited, I know that. I can feel it in my bones already, walking up and down that hill. It doesn't get any easier, it gets harder. <laughs> I'll be happy though if I can fish another 10 years.